I'd like to invite uh, Kathleen to come forward to give us an announcement. Good morning, church. Hi, everyone. So I want to give you an update for our coming church camp. So um, because I saw a lot of new faces today, so I will going to spend a little bit more time to explain to you. Um, originally, we were planning our church camp in Nanjing, but uh, there something happened, so we canceled the Nanjing church camp. Instead of Nanjing Church Camp, we changed the plan to our camper van staycation. So, um, uh, yeah. So, this is our location. Our camper van staycation will gonna be uh, in Qingpu, and then uh, this is the general agenda. Where the first day we're gonna go to the camp, and then settle down, and then uh, we were gonna explore the campsite with different activities and events. And uh, also at the night, we have extended praise and worship session. Second day and third day, we're mainly going to spend the time with our guest speaker from far away from Sweden. And uh, also the second day, we're going to have a family sport day. So uh, throughout the different uh, activities, and also especially we offer the study session with guest speaker. So we really want to uh, create an environment that can draw near the relationship with, uh, between you and God, you and your spouse, and you and your family, and together uh, you and uh, like our community. So um, if you haven't planned yet your May holiday um, and then if you want to find out like a community to a communi community to join with us please come and, and register okay um, as pastor also mentioned last last week we offer a 50% of discount for the camper vans so please catch this chance okay and uh, our staff we're going to be waiting for you outside and uh, after the service, so if you have any question, please let us know. Thank you. Thanks, Kathleen. <clears throat> we will be having a guest speaker with us next Sunday, and uh, we will have a gospel rally uh, next weekend. So please help us to spread the word that the services will not be here. The services will be downstairs at the Garden Pavilion. It can take about 800 people to 1,000 people. Uh, there will be a session on Saturday, 7.30 p.m. To, uh, to about 9 o'clock at the Garden Pavilion. Okay, not here. And uh, the youth and the children can join us at the Garden Pavilion. But on Sunday, uh, please bring your children to the kids' church, your youth, to the youth service, and then the adult service will still be at the Garden Pavilion, right? Okay, where we had the Easter service and uh, the anniversary celebration right at the ground floor. Next Sunday, as I said, will be a gospel rally. And uh, I felt that I need to prepare you for what is coming. So please turn with me to Mark chapter 16, verse 15 to 20. And he said to them, Go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He who believes and is baptized and will be saved. But he who does not believe will be condemned. And these signs will follow those who believe. In my name, they will cast out demons, they will speak with new tongues, they will take up serpents, and if they drink anything deadly, it will by no means hurt them. And they will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. So then, after the Lord had spoken to them, he was received up into heaven and sat down at the right hand of God. And they went out and preached everywhere, the Lord working with them and confirming the word through the accompanying signs. Amen. Four people are going into an eternity without Christ almost every two seconds around the world. Well, there will be those whom we know and those we do not know. Nevertheless, the Lord knows them by name and it's never God's intent for them to be separated from Him for eternity. On one hand, they are supposed to decide whether to receive Christ in their lives and on the other hand, the gospel should be preached to all people. We must make known the gospel to as many people as possible because time is running out. The job of preaching the gospel to the ends of the world has been entrusted to all of us. Yes, you and I have been giving the word and the ministry of reconciliation. Jesus' last command should be our first concern since we declare our love and passion for Him. 
We should have an eternity in perspective because life on earth is temporal. Life on earth is meaningless unless we understand the plan of salvation for us. He's calling upon our lives. This great commission and the entrustment of the gospel into our hands. It means we are to be an effective witness for Him in the home, neighbourhood and marketplace. Our professional job, career path and the resources entrusted to us are merely a means for us to live our lives for Him. With this new identity in Christ and having the conviction that we have an eternal home in the presence of God, that brings meaning and purpose on earth. Everything else is but vanity of vanities. There are two ways to preach the gospel to the ends of the earth. The first way is to ensure that everyone is mobilized to be an effective witness for Christ within our circle of friends and area of influence. Every one of us is a messenger. Amen. The second way is for the evangelist who is the, one of the fivefold ministries mentioned in the epistles to the church of Ephesus to preach to the masses through evangelists like Billy Graham. And by the way, Billy Graham had a greater crowd than Taylor Swift. <laughs> Reinhard Bonke and Daniel Collender. The only difference between the evangelists and us will be the operation of the power gift of the Holy Spirit as the Holy Spirit wills by the evangelists. For us, it will be by faith based on what is written in Mark chapter 16 that we have just read. There is a wrong perception in the world that all religions lead us to the same God. Something that God of all creation expresses himself differently to different nationalities and ethnic groups. God is not a God of confusion, but order. He is unequivocal in his presentation of his salvation plan to us. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. I say, Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. As a church, we must have this conviction in our hearts that Jesus is the only way and we must have the urgency to preach the gospel. The power is in the gospel. Romans chapter 1, verse 16 to 17 says, I am not ashamed of the gospel for it is the power of God unto salvation for everyone who believes. For the Jew first and also for the Greek. For it is written, for it in it, the righteousness of God is revealed from faith to faith and it is written, the just shall live by faith. The just shall live by faith in the message of the salvation plan of God. Jesus wasn't ashamed of us when he bore our sin on the cross of Calvary. We should not be ashamed of the gospel, especially when we know that, that he is the only way for our loved ones to be saved to get to heaven and to spend eternity with God. Many people are afraid to share the gospel because they fear the reaction of those whom they will share the gospel with. They are also scared to be rejected by men. Therefore, they are ashamed to tell their friends that they are disciples of Jesus Christ. They are fearful of sharing the gospel because of possible persecution. They fear and worry about the result after sharing the gospel with their loved ones, friends and colleagues. Yes, we might be persecuted, in fact, the only suffering that Jesus promised us is, the prom is that we will be persecuted for our faith. That's the only suffering that Jesus promised us. That when you stand up for righteousness, when you stand up for your faith, you will be persecuted. And we shouldn't be afraid of that. We should stand up for what we truly believe. We cannot afford to compromise. Someone was telling me recently, that, you know, Pastor Daniel, if you preach the same way, the same message in my country, you will get into trouble. You will be sued for your conviction. Praise God for China. <laughs> that we can still preach what we preach. The persecution will be in a very different form in your own country. We'll get into that afterwards. Don't be ashamed of the gospel. It is the power of God unto salvation for everyone who believes. It didn't mention your oral skill, your ability to convince, and your eloquence of speech to convict someone of their sin, of the coming, righteous, righteous, uh, of the coming judgment, and of righteousness. Let me share with you a testimony. Many years ago, when my wife and I just got married, she received a phone call one day 
at a workplace that her father has met with an accident. Around about 8 o'clock, she received that phone call because her dad went out cycling at 5.30 in the morning. He met with an accident. He was hit by a car. He was injured. His shin broke into a few pieces and they rushed him to hospital. It took them some time to, tra uh, to trace who his next of kin are. So we rushed down to the hospital. The first thing we did was we wanted to share the gospel with my father-in-law. But there was one problem. He doesn't speak English. He doesn't speak Mandarin. He doesn't speak Cantonese that I know. He speaks Hokkien. For those of you who understand, I mean, the, the Chinese have different dialects, right? Their dialects group at different provinces. So my, my, my father-in-law speaks Hokkien. So I told the Lord, say, God, you are God of miracle. Let me speak. Let him understand my standard of Hokkien. <laughs> you ask me to preach in Cantonese, I think I can share the gospel in Cantonese. But if you ask me to share in Hokkien, so I, I shared the gospel in very simple Hokkien. Then I asked my father-in-law, would you like to receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Saviour? He said, yes. Praise God. And then after that, he went to church on his own every Sunday. But the problem is, he is a very active old man. He loves cycling. So when his shin broke into four pieces at 68 years old, after the operation, there were four metal rods coming out from his shin because four broke into four pieces, right? And it, it was screwed up to, together. So every morning, I will drive to his place, I will shower him, and I'll pray for him. And I told the Lord, I said, Lord, my father-in-law loves cycling. He cannot have his leg amputated. We prayed, right? He will be a very miserable man. He liked to walk around in the neighborhood, meet up with his friends, go out for some food, you know, at a hawker center. So every day when I bathe him, that four metal rods will speak to me. In fact, the doctor told us, don't expect him to walk again because he's 68 years old. He's not 8 years old. 8 years old, there's still chances for the bones to grow, right? Doctors, right? Where are the futan people? <laughs> <clears throat> so 68 years old, maybe at the end of the day, you need to amputate his leg. So we just give praise to God. I say, God, you're the God of creation. You love my father-in-law. And you know, one year later, he went to remove all the screws and the metal rod. He walked. Amen. He walked to church every Sunday Amen. to worship God. And he would say, Ya so kiwa. Say, Jesus saves me. Praise God. Yeah. So it is the power of God. I'm not saying that we shouldn't be, not all of us are linguistic people, right? but at least we should be able to communicate the truth of the Bible in a very simple manner so that people understand the gospel. In fact, last, I, I received a text from the US uh, at 2 a.m. in the morning uh, from a former church member. She, she asked me for all the booklets that we have printed called I, I Have Found Him, you know, because she has been using this booklet to share with the Chinese who have migrated to the US and they are getting to know Jesus Christ as their Lord and Saviour. So she said, can you send me more copies? I said, I will send you the PDF version. You can use whatever you want. So the gospel is the power of God unto salvation for everyone who believes. So don't be so concerned whether you have the ability to convince. Because it is not your job to convince people. It is not a debate. You're not doing apologetic, right? So John chapter 16 verse 8 says, And when he has come, he will convict the world of sin, and of righteousness and of judgment. Who is the one who has come? The Holy Spirit. Okay? So the Apostle Paul in the above scripture says that the gospel is the power of God unto salvation for everyone who believes. God loves the world's people regardless of skin colour, social status and family background. We may even wonder if there's any hope for the greatest sinner that has come, that has lived among us. Now let me put it very clearly. We love the LGBTQ. We love those who have gender fluidity confusion. We love the fornicators and the adulterers. We love them, but we don't condone their practice. We welcome all of them to come in. Bring them next Sunday. Bring them every Sunday. Why? Because Jesus died for the ungodly. So all ungodly people deserve to be saved. Amen. Amen. 
We were sinners, saved by grace. So that's the reason why the gospel is so powerful. You know, I, let me, let me uh, share this testimony with you. My mother, you know, sometimes we tell people, stop sinning, then come to church, right? But if they can change using their own strength, then Jesus would have died in vain. If they are able to use their own strength to be accepted by God, or if the law is able to allow us to be righteous, then Jesus would have died in vain. Once upon a time, because I'm, I'm, I'm the first person to become a Christian in my family. And when you become a Christian, you like your loved ones to be saved because you know that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. So I went home, I told my parents, because they're Cantonese, they love to play mahjong. Every Saturday and Sunday, they will play mahjong. I grew up in the environment. I'll sit beside them and learn, oh, this is the way to play mahjong, right? Then I'll tell my, my mom, say, can you stop playing mahjong? Come to church with me. Then my mom will say, when I'm good, I'll come to church with you. That's the wrong message. But the good news is, um, my dad, when he was hospitalized for liver failure, I invited my elder to come to, to the hospital. <clears throat> At the time, I was just maybe 24. Yeah, about 24. And uh, my elder shared the gospel with my, my father. He received Christ. And a week, a week or so later, he, he passed away. And my mom, seeing that my dad got saved, went to church on her own, got saved, sing in the choir, live until 96 years old, and she passed on to glory. Brothers and sisters in Christ, there's no better news that you can ever give to your parents, your friends, and your loved ones than the good news of Jesus Christ. The gospel is the power of God unto salvation for everyone who believes. It's because all religion teaches people to be good. But no one can be completely good using their own strength. No philosophical, no philosophical thinking will help us to be disciplined enough to be good because we sin in our thoughts. We sin with our words and our action. Jesus said you don't have to commit the act of adultery. The very moment you think of the woman in your mind, you have already committed adultery because of the sin nature in us. But the good news is God did not wait for us to be perfect. God did not wait for us to be good. Romans chapter 5 verse 8 says, but God demonstrated His love for us in this moment. We were yet sinners. Christ died for us. What God did was He sent Jesus to be on the cross, to be made sin for us, so that our filthy rags will be placed on Christ and in exchange, God will give us the rope of righteousness through Christ. 2 Corinthians 5.21 says, For He made Him who knew no sin to be sin for us, that we might have the righteousness of God in Him. It is in Him in whom that you are accepted by God. It is in what Jesus has done for you, the blood that was shed for you, that caused you to be accepted by God. There's not, nothing that man can boast based on what we have done or not done. That's why in Romans chapter 4, verse 5 and verse 6 says, But to him who does not work, but believes on him who justifies the ungodly, his faith is accounted for righteousness. Just as David also described the blessedness of man to whom God impute righteousness apart from works. Blessed are those whose lawless deeds are forgiven. Blessed whose sins are covered. Blessed is the man, man to whom God shall not impute sin. We were all sinners. There's many sinners out there. It could be the LGBT practitioner, gender fluidity people, people who commit adultery, drinkers, people who are in AA. The good news is, God justifies the ungodly and all ungodly people can be saved. So next Sunday, next Saturday and every Sunday, don't wait for your friends to be good in order to bring them to church. Just bring them to church. Amen. 
and God will work in them. Let me, let me share with you a testimony. When we were meeting in uh, Merritt Hotel, Merritt Hotel has an overflow room just outside the hall. Okay? So in this overflow room, the, the original intent was to have the nursing mothers sit there because there is hot water provided. They can make milk for the children. But then it became a place for the, the husbands who sits there. You know what they do? They sleep. <laughs> it's okay. Let them sleep. Because when they are awake, they will listen to the preaching. I can tell you, the Holy Spirit will continue to work within them. And there were many weeks, let me tell you, those husbands, when the altar call is made, every Sunday we do it, right? Those of you who have not come to know Jesus, you would like to come to know Jesus, just raise up your hand. And because they are seated outside, watching the television, many men have opened the door, stood at the door, said, I want Jesus. Husbands of sisters who came to church waiting for her to finish in order to for lunch together. So let them sleep. <laughs> it is okay. Don't bug them. Don't disturb them. Let them sleep and let the Holy Spirit work in their lives. Amen? Because when they hear enough, they will be saved. So praise God that it is not our works of righteousness because our work of righteousness are like filthy rag before God. It is not philosophical thoughts. It is not good works that cause us to be saved. It is the power of the gospel and the blood of Jesus Christ that gives us the imputed righteousness that God puts your name in that list that you stand right before God because of the blood of Jesus. Amen. 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 You know, my mom was 96 years old and she was hospitalized for um, breathing difficulties. And uh, it, it, was, it was difficult for my sister because she was the caregiver and I'm here in Shanghai. So we, 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 we rushed back to be with her. In fact, we have to leave the church camp last year to fly back to Singapore because she was hospitalized and, and um, my sister was struggling whether to you know, get the doctor to inject her so that she, uh, some kind of a, it's like opium, not no opium, no opium. Uh, what's it called? Morphine. Right, some form of morphine, and uh, because they were concerned of overdose, I can tell you Singapore will not have anybody overdose with morphine. So I said, I believe personally that mom is okay to have that injection so that she'll breathe better. Because to me, all of us will die. It's better that she's more comfortable, she's a child of God. When she passed on, her mouth was open. Her mouth was open because she breathed her last breath. <sighs> and she departs. In the split of a second, she's in the presence of God. Completely peaceful. But do you know that today, for those people who do not know God, they struggle. They struggle at their deathbed because they do not know where they are going. They do not know whether when they breathe their last breath and go into an eternity, will they be accepted by God. So for me, as a pastor, I'm very confident that when my mom breathes her last breath, she's in the presence of God. When she was cremated, I was not very, I mean, maybe I'm a bit emotionally detached. I mean, I, I, even, I even interpreted for the pastor who preached because the interpreter was late. I was not overwhelmed with emotions because to me, the funeral week, the funeral uh, service is not for the dead. It's for the living. Nothing that we do at the funeral week will change the course of direction for the person who has left. There's no time to ponder. There's no time to struggle during that moment. Don't live in regrets at the funeral service that you have not shared the gospel with your loved ones because men only die once and after that judgment. There are two kinds of death. Physical death that will happen to everyone. The second kind of death is spiritual separation from God. Either we are in the presence of God or we are thrown into the lake of fire which is never intended for us. 
is intended for the devil and his cohort. To suffer there and to be judged forever. God wants every soul to be in heaven. That's why we need to be part of the contingent to share the gospel, to plunder hell and to populate heaven. Don't wait. So what is Jesus' way? Ephesians chapter 1 verse 7 says, In Him we have redemption through His blood, the forgiveness of sin according to the riches of His grace. Just to substantiate this truth, Colossians 1.14 says, In whom we have redemption through His blood, the forgiveness of sin. It is important to understand this term redemption. Once upon a time when Adam and Eve sinned against God, they sold themselves to the devil. And the sin nature continued to be with us until today. Nobody is able to redeem themselves based on their own strength. Just like, for example, if you have a Rolex watch or Patek Philippe today and you need money, you pawn your watch and they give you maybe 20,000, 30,000 US dollars. But in order to redeem that watch, you need to pay maybe 50,000 US dollars to redeem that watch. But how about mankind? When we have sinned against God, held in ransom by the devil, how can God righteously and justly redeem us? The blood of Jesus. In whom we have redemption through His blood, the forgiveness of sins. When Jesus hung on the cross, He dealt with the sin issue once and for all. Past, present and future sin, the sin issue of humanity was resolved on the cross. He has redeemed you and I. We have the forgiveness of sin. We have a clean and clean conscience that one day, when you and I breathe our last breath, with our family members next to us, you can smile and say, see you later. But will you be able to say to your dying relatives, See you later. You are the messenger. We are the messenger. Let me share with you one testimony, another testimony. Um, I received a phone call from a church member some 20 years ago. And he said, can you come and share the gospel with my relative? And when I went to that place, I realized that the relative is actually a German sea master, a feng shui master, an old man. And um, when I was there, this old man shared with me, said, you know, I was a feng, I'm, a, I'm a feng shui master. And he shared with me about how, how much he charged people. You know, feng shui master charge a lot of money, right? right? <laughs> and he told me, you know, this German sea plate is 5,000 US dollars. I sell it and everybody just buy it like suckers, you know. And I said, okay, but he said, I have no peace. So I shared the gospel with him. And he received Christ. And after, the good thing about sharing the gospel with the old people is, when they received Christ at an old age, they would have thought through what they're going to do with their ancestral worship, what he's going to do with their past beliefs. They make a 180 degrees turnaround to follow Jesus. How many of you have turned 360? After you receive Jesus, your life is still the same. One week later, this old man called me and said, Pastor Daniel, can you come and clear out all the German sea stuff from my house? I, was from, I, I visited his house before, right? So when he told me to come and help clear out everything, I drove the church van, a Mercedes Vito. I drove there, I folded all the chairs. It was barely enough to pack in everything including all the German sea plate that you charge people 5,000 US dollars. I didn't sell it, okay. <laughs> I drove to the garbage dump. I brought a hammer. I cracked everything, threw everything, and his life was never the same again. In fact, I buried him. During SARS, he was hospitalized for some pneumonia, not, not SARS. So he was double back because he was in the same hospital and the, parent, the, the children said, can you conduct the funeral for him? I still remember conducting his funeral because of SARS, the SARS period. His body was double back. It was a very far-fetched funeral parlor. 
that only f- five people attended the funeral. The wife, the son, the do- daughter-in-law, and the grandchild, and myself. I still remember, after the funeral, I would go back to church, take a shower with that door, <laughs> threw away my whole suit, because we have to do that. But it was worthwhile, because I know that this old man who left German Sea is in the arms of the living God. John 5, 24. Most assuredly I say to you, he who hears my word and believes in him who sent me has everlasting life and shall not come into judgment, but has passed from death to life. What death? Spiritual death. There's a physical death and the spiritual death. He has passed from spiritual death into everlasting life with God and will not come into judgment. There are two judgment seats. The judgment seat of Christ, that all of us as Christians will appear one day, and Jesus will ask you, what have you done with the gifts and calling that I have for your life? What have you done? Because at the judgment of seat of Christ, God will give out rewards for being faithful. You can't say, oh, my wife served, you know. So you see all your wife rewards ah, in heaven, then you have nothing. So please serve. Okay? Then there's the second judgment seat, the great white throne. When God will open up the book, and if your name is not found in the book, you'll be the lake of fire. But your name is in the book because you believe in your heart and confess with your mouth that Jesus Christ is your Lord and Saviour. You cannot save yourself. You're spiritually bankrupt. And you call upon the name of Jesus. You believe in the blood of Jesus Christ. Your name is inside. You have the imputed righteousness. That's why you live to glorify God today. And let me be very frank about something, okay? And some people say, Oh, Pastor Daniel, you preach so, so aggressively. People will leave church, you know? So it's okay. I'm not here to please men. Uh, what do I want to say? Huh? <laughs> Never mind. Probably not important. Let's move on. <laughs> Ephesians 1.6 To the praise, the glory of His grace by which he, ac- he accepted us in the Beloved. Once upon a time before we were saved, we feel very insecure. We feel there's a root of rejection. The root of rejection started in the Garden of Eden when Adam and Eve sinned against God. They feel rejected. And from that day onwards, mankind tried to find their way back to God and to be accepted by God. They use religion, they use philosophical practices, they use every kind of thing. Sometimes we feel insecure and feel rejected because we are trying to use our accolades our position in the company to be accepted by mankind. But the real rejection problem is not the school that we have attended, the company that we work for, the housing estate that we live in. The real rejection is rejection by God. But praise be to God that we are accepted in the beloved because of the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen? Now, the second part that I really want to share with you today is Jesus promised us that signs and wonders will follow the preaching of the gospel. Two passages, verse 18 to 20 of the main text and 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 4 and 5. It says, And they will take up serpents. If they drink anything deadly, it will by no means hurt them. They will lay hand on the sick and they will recover. And so then, after the Lord has spoken to them, he, will, he was received up in the heaven and sat down on the right hand of God. They will preach and everywhere the Lord working with them and confirming through the accompanying signs. Okay? Then it also say talk about uh, cast out demons. Now, Christ for all nations advised us that when the presence of God comes, there will be manifestation. That means those who are demon-possessed will manifest. Right? In fact, this morning, someone uh, brought a, young, a youth here. Uh, last night, he was, he was manifesting in the house of our church member. But praise be to God, he received Christ today. Okay? Now, I want to prepare you that when you bring your friends here, people, some of you might think, oh, Pastor Daniel, Shanghai, no demons, you know, so clean. Maybe you go to the villages, there are demons. Demons are everywhere. But I don't want to magnify the demons, but in the event that you 
experience someone who is demon-possessed, don't run away. If the devil is supposed to run, not you. What should you do? Let's say on Saturday or Sunday, someone fall down and just rattle and foam and the eyes roll back and a, a woman's with a man's voice coming out. What do you do? Don't call me. <laughs> because I'll be hosting the guest speaker. You do it. So what do, we, what, what do we mean by that? Jesus in Matthew chapter 18, verse 20 says, All authority in heaven and on earth belongs to me. Go and make disciples of all nations. All means all. Amen? Amen. And that's after the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Say, I have all authority. Go and preach the gospel. Mark chapter 6, 16 says, they call, Those who believe. Are you believers? Yes. Yes. Are you believers? Yes. Oh, better say loudly, huh? <laughs> Because that will determine whether which book you are written in, alright? Those who believe shall cast out demons. It is a vested authority that Christ has given you and I. Amen. If Ephesians chapter 1, because I have no time, says when, Christ, when Jesus was risen from the dead, God placed him at the right hand of the Father, far above all principalities, power, dominion and might. Principalities, power, dominion and might is talking about the hierarchy in the demonic dominion. But when, when Jesus was raised, he was, put at, he was placed at the right hand of the Father far above. What does far above mean? Let's say right now we are level two. We are level two, right? Far above means, let's say you are, someone is flying across this hotel right now in an aeroplane at 20,000 feet. It's far above level two. So what I want to tell you is, if demons were to manifest, you are not on par with the demons. You are far above because you are seated with Christ. Ephesians 2, 6. Amen? So positionally, you are seated with Christ. So if someone to many were to manifest, what's going to happen on Saturday and Sunday is, we will clear them to another room and we will cast the demons out. In Jesus' name, not based on the volume of your voice. Don't shout until your voice is caused. Because it's not the volume of your voice that scares the devil. It's the name of Jesus. Amen? Amen. Who can do it? Jesus. Yes, Jesus. But you do it. <laughs> Amen. Are you here with me today? Don't go and look for me, okay? You do it. Say, in the name of Jesus, get out. Okay, let me share everyone's testimony again. I still remember it was our church 70th anniversary. I was supposed to interpret for Bishop Wibun Hub, who was here uh, a few months ago. <laughs> but the night before the anniversary, I was just preparing myself to interpret because no script and it's very stressful, right? And his, his England is very deep. His English is very powerful, right? So I'm going to think of the Chinese word. Some Anglo-Saxon. Wow. Kind of, so, what happened was, someone called me, said, Pastor Daniel, my mum is manifesting at home. Can you come? I mean, he cannot say, oh, I'm preparing for tomorrow. I can't, right? So I went down. And, okay, not, not that story. Another story. So many experiences. So I like to bring cell leaders with me. So I, I, someone said, okay, someone is possessed. So I called two cell leaders. Can you come with me? So that you learn how to cast out demons. So we went down. And the first thing to do is to share the gospel. So the first, as I was sharing the gospel, this woman just, Wah! and she just went into a contoction and you can see she's clearly demon-possessed. So when she, wow, one cell leader go this way, one cell leader went the other way. I said, where are you going? I need your help. I mean, she's a woman, you know. I cannot touch her. She said, come back, come back. So, so we, we delivered her. So what you do is you tell the person, Call on the name of Jesus. Tell the demons, I don't want you. You have no right in my life. I don't want you anymore. So she was free. It will not take a long time. You can do it. Okay? If there's manifestation. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 4 and 5 says, And my speech and my preaching were not with persuasive words of human wisdom, but in demonstration of spirit and of power, that your faith should not be in the wisdom of man, but in the power of God. Can you imagine this is the Apostle Paul talking? The greatest theologian that ever exists in humanity. 
says that my preaching is not by persuasive words of human wisdom, but in demonstration of spirit and of power. The Holy Spirit cannot be seen. So how do you see the demonstration of the Spirit and of power? There must be some visible evidence that God was in their midst doing something. First and foremost, I want to tell you that when we pray in church on a normal Sunday, when someone comes forward and uh, we pray for for sicknesses, okay, it will be based on Mark chapter 16 based on the main text today, that those who believe when they lay hand on the sick, the sick will recover. So, very quickly, why lay hands? Because in the Old Testament, the laying hand ritual represents that when the sin of Israel, but when the priest lay hands on a goat, the sin of Israel was transferred to the goat and it will be a scapegoat going to the wilderness. So, there's a transference of sin. So, there is a transference, right? So, likewise, when we lay hands, there's a transference of God's power into the person. Now, it is not the preacher. It is not the evangelist. It is not the pastor. It is not you. It is not the cell leader. It is God. Let's get it right. Huh? Don't look to man. Man is but a conduit, a channel. When you lay hands, the Bible says in Mark chapter 16, they will be healed. But whether it's a healing or a miracle, it is an act of God. You heard Clara. When the husband, Andre, called me that the wife is hospitalized, by the time I reached the hospital, she has already finished her operation. True enough, the next day, when I went on Sunday afternoon, she was walking around like a normal human being, although there was a big gash here, talking to people and very full of joy and full of power. Why? Because it's God. It's not man. So, salvation in itself is already a miracle. Okay? Now, but there is a difference between us praying on Sunday and the manifestation of the Spirit. I'll say something today. We cannot make miracles happen because it is the manifestation and the will of God whether He wants to carry it through. Follow? But there's one thing that we can do. It is important to praise and worship God. Let's be fair to the 9 o'clock service. I say that at the 9 o'clock, I'll say it at the 11 o'clock. Service starts at 11 o'clock. Service doesn't start at 11.30. You're not here for a movie. Not, you're not here for entertainment. The worship team is not here to entertain you. You are here to worship God. Be at church on time to worship God. Because the Bible tells us when we draw near to God through praise and worship, when we draw near to God with our heart, God will draw near to us. And when God draw near to us and when the Word of God is preached, the Bible tells us He will confirm it with signs and wonders following. God is still alive. Miracles can still happen. Amen? Amen? So, very quickly, in closing, turn with me to 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 1, verse 7 to verse 11. Now, I'm talking about the gift of the evangelist right now. The first part, I talk about the believers. On a normal Sunday, when you're at work, or when you're at home, or your neighborhood, you can pray for people, okay? But it's different when the Holy Spirit manifests. Now, concerning spiritual gifts, brothers, I would not have you ignorant we can be ignorant about spiritual gifts because never been taught, right? But the manifestation of the Spirit, talking about Holy Spirit, is given to each for the profit of all. For one, to one is given a word of wisdom, to another, uh, to another the word of knowledge through the same Spirit, to another faith by the same Spirit, to another gifts of healing by the same Spirit, to another the working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another discerning of Spirit, to another different kinds of tongues, to another the interpretation of tongues. But one and the same Spirit works all these things, distributing to each individually as He wills. That means the gifts of Jesus has the full manifestation of the gifts. He has the fullness of the Holy Spirit. But when He ascended on high, He gave gifts unto man. Amen? That's why the fivefold ministry, the apostle, the prophet, the evangelist, the pastor, and the teacher, and then the nine gifts of the Holy Spirit is given to the whole body of Jesus Christ. All right? 
Now, I want to concentrate. There are two, three categories. The first category is revelational gift. The gift that reveals something. The word of knowledge, word of wisdom and discerning of spirit. Right? Oral gifts. Gifts that say something. Tongues, prophecy, interpretation of tongues. The last category that we want to cover is the gifts that do something. Faith, healing and miracles. Now, the gift of faith is not the measure of faith. The measure of faith means faith comes by hearing, hearing the word of God, right? Roman, uh, Hebrews 10, 17 and Romans 12, 3. We have a measure of faith. Our faith can grow. But this gift of faith, it is a gift by God to the individual. This is a supernatural endowment of faith to fulfill an impossible task that you or the evangelist could not do otherwise. This is where God works through a person, a miracle that one could not normally do. This faith is unlimited because God is his source. This gift of faith is not affected by what one sees, feels or experience. Honestly speaking, when someone comes on a normal Sunday with, on a wheelchair or with an oxygen cylinder into the church service, I will not, in normal circumstances, tell the person in the name of Jesus, stand up and walk if the gift is not operating. Because as a human, I'll be affected by what I see, I'll be affected by the medical reports. But the gift of faith is different. When the gift of faith come into, come into the evangelist and it's operating, he will not be moved. He might not even lay hands. He might just say over the pulpit, there's someone here. You have just had a stroke. Stand up. Has it happened in ICS? Yes. When Ronnie Sebastian was here, when we had a healing service, someone came with a stroke. He could hardly stand for five minutes. I was a host pastor. She told the, the man, right, stand up, raise your hand. I said, wow, can I? <laughs> he can hardly stand for five minutes. He stood up. He raised his hand for half an hour. Hear me, huh? Healing is a process. Miracle is instantaneous. That means if healing takes place, it will take time. For example, my father in his lower leg was broken into four pieces. It took one year. It was a healing process. He did not just, I, I did not jank him out and say, walk, father-in-law, just walk. Come on. I didn't do that because that's crazy. Right? So healing is a process, but miracle is instantaneous. But in order for miracle to happen, these three gifts must operate at the same time. Gifts of healing, I'm closing already, don't worry. Okay? It's con it is controversial because of its plurality. Which means when God ascended on high, He gave gifts unto man, be it evangelist. No one evangelist has the ability through the power of God to heal all kinds of sicknesses. It is the wisdom of God. If one evangelist can heal cancer, or the, 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 the blind, the, the lame, and, and so on and so forth, I can tell you very naturally we'll incline to worship this man. Oh, praise God, you know. But no. Gifts of healings. Because of time constraint, Paul also left someone sick. All right? The Apostle Paul. Very in close, uh, the gift of uh, miracles. Very quickly. The working of miracles. Hebrews 2, 4 says, God also bear witness with signs and wonders, various miracles and gifts of the Holy Spirit, according to His own will. So God bear witness and signs and wonders. It is the supernatural occurrence that is beyond our comprehension. It's a miracle. So the two words that talk about energy and dunamis, the same power that raised Jesus from the dead will be operating in the working of miracles. Because for example, if the evangelist were to say, stand up, the person in a wheelchair, stand up and walk, the gift of faith must be there because I won't do it. He must say, stand up. Then the working of miracles must be working in the life of this person, this person's body, whatever, and whatever sicknesses and illnesses that he was, he's suffering in, the gift of healing will begin to work in his body and miracles will happen because he walked. but it is as the Holy Spirit wills. Okay? So in closing, when we have the Gospel Rally next Sunday, and Saturday, and Saturday at 7.30 at the Garden Pavilion, next Sunday at the 9 o'clock and 11 o'clock at the Garden Pavilion, bring your friends. 
let us come as brothers and sisters in Christ to what we can do is we can lift up the atmosphere. As the worship team leads, we worship. And when we worship, the presence of God comes. Leave it to the evangelist to know when, when to call for the sick. But the first thing that he will do, I can assure you is, he will call for people to be safe. Honestly, as a pastor, to me, healing and miracle come second. What is important is for your friend to call upon the name of Jesus to be safe. Because we only live once and after that judgment. If healing signs and wonders happen, praise be to God. So what's going to happen is, they will be called to the front to receive Christ. All the cell leaders will have a booklet to take down their names and their contact. They will give them a booklet. They will clear the room. And then after that, the evangelist will call for people who are sick to come forward. Or maybe he might not come forward for a call. He'll just pray. And then people will testify of their healings to give glory to God. So let's believe God for something to happen in ICS. Good things. The manifestation of God. In closing, it is not man. It is not the pastor. It is not the evangelist. It is God. So that's why I say, I remember what I say already. When you come on Sunday, every Sunday, the most important segment is praise and worship. Because we sing to the audience of one, Jesus Christ. And when you worship God, your heart will be open. The Word of God can go in and do whatever is necessary in your life. So I'm not going to be, I'm not being hard on you, but I just want you to honour God who saved you the best gift that you can ever receive in your life, the plan of salvation. God don't owe you anything. You go owe God everything. Let's bow our head and pray. With every head bow and every eye closed, I'd like to ask a very important question. If you're here with us this afternoon, you're not a Christian, you have never received Jesus Christ as your Lord and Saviour, but you'd like to receive Him today. You don't have to wait until next Saturday or Sunday. I'd like to pray with you. If that's you, we'll just raise up your right hand and put it down. Anyone here? Do not struggle. Jesus loves you. Anybody, you're not a Christian, but would like to receive Him today, we'll just raise up your right hand and put it down. Father, I give you praise and thanks that you have given us the word and the ministry of reconciliation. We are the messenger of the gospel. Your great commission is something that you have entrusted to all of us as believers of Jesus Christ. Help us not to be a consumer of Christianity. Help us to live our life to glorify you and help us to be the faithful messenger to the lost out there. Father, we give you praise and thanks that you died. Jesus died for the ungodly and everybody qualifies to be saved. Help us not to wait for them to turn around before we invite them to, to church, but help us to be gracious, loving and kind to those who are out there who need Jesus Christ as their Lord and Saviour. Help us to invite them, share the gospel with them and love them. And now as you leave this place, may the love of the Father, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you now and forevermore. Amen. Praise God.